I'll um, I'll start to unmute you guys, and then if you have any questions, you know, just just speak freely. If not, that's that's cool too. Um, and then we can we can uh, wrap it up and go from there. But I think everyone's unmuted. Does anyone have any uh, questions for me or, or Donnie in regards to marketing? Mike, I have one for you. Yeah, what's up? So you being there in Marlboro, and I I graduate. I have a shop in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Do you? How do you go about like looking? Do you look at the zip code or demographic? How how, how do you look at how I you can put me on the map? Mm -hmm. You know differently in my community than what people are doing. Yeah. So for starters, and this, and then this is good for everyone to know, not even as a from a marketing perspective, but as a business perspective. So whenever we go and we say, okay, here's a shop. Um, how, do we, how do we get to this shop? When we first look at, okay, what's the population, right? Is it 13,000, is it 3,000, is it 100,000? What's the population? We look at that and then we factor in how many barber shops are within a 10 to 15 mile radius of your shop. Because on average, uh, most, people will, most people won't drive more than 10, 15 minutes even to go to a barber shop. So we kind of make it, we kind of, no more than seven miles, I want to say, we, we look at. Um, and we, we, we look at, okay, what shops are advertising? Because there's tools and resources that we have that we use and some that are even available to the public to see what advertising are some barber shops doing, right? So we're, we're studying what they're doing and then our strategy, which, which is we want to give value first um, when it comes to content, but showcasing the experience of the shop. Uh, you look at, okay, are these other shops, what are they doing for marketing right now? Because the majority of barber shops in today's world aren't doing anything. They're just not. They, they, and a lot of them are using a lot of older methods. They're still passing out business cards and flyers, which works. It helps, but it's not as effective as running a social media ad. Right, especially when a guy is saying, "Man, I need a haircut," <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the position, and there's a picture of Carl. Yeah, exactly. So, so when it comes to the ads, what we're doing is we're, we're geofencing that city or town, meaning we won't make. So, if, if if you're running, if we're running an ad for Rapid City, South Dakota, I am. I'm going to make sure that only people inside that city are going to see that ad, and not people who live 50, 50 miles outside the outside the city, right? So we're making sure we're, we're staying concentrated in that area. And what eventually happens is if you market to a certain population for a long period of time, and they're not just seeing the same old ad, they're seeing say, a customer testimonial, this, this, another ad they're seeing, you cutting someone behind the chair, another ad where it just shows a nice style haircut, Another one where it shows a couple kids at your shop. We're showing them different ads that were really storytelling, right? And when they see you over a long period of time, the, the perception is, is, hey, this shop must be successful because I see them everywhere. They have to be, I, I, need, I need to check them because I'm seeing them everywhere. And, then, and you create that perception through branding, right? Positioning yourself, differentiating your, 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 your shop or your brand, but just constantly being in front of people because at the end of the day, it just comes down to, a, a, a numbers a numbers game. If I present, if I if I were to show your shop consistently to a group of a hundred people over a long period of time, different creative, so they're not seeing the same old ad and getting annoyed with you, but instead starting to grow and like you and starting to connect with you, um, create that relationship online. It, it, it really helps differentiate you from every other shop. It's just it's just staying in front of them. So that's kind of the strategy we go in. We have about the population, get an idea of how many people we can reach, with whatever budget, and and then we, we map out the competition. And then our strategy is uh, to run a bunch of different creatives, different pictures, videos, showcasing the experience of the shop. We're not just showing off a haircut. Because if we just show off a haircut, the only thing they're going to – oh, it's a nice haircut. How much do you charge? Right? And if we're going off that, if we're, if we're competing at price, it's a race to the bottom, that, and, and you're never going to win that way. You just aren't. Right. you got to be different. Yeah. So, I mean, any other questions? Um, mine, mine was kind of like almost the same thing where like <clears throat> before I got into this, you know, I was like – I'm not in that big of a city mm -hmm. and the barber here has already made a big name for himself. 
So if if more barbers start coming to my city, you know, is it is it going to be an oversaturated market? And I know I'm gonna have to try to get that out of my head that there probably is no such thing as a oversaturated market, you know, for barbering. Yeah, uh, there there really is really isn't because you got to look at it like this. Even if you have um, because your population is what like three thousand. Is, is that what yours was? I think you said earlier, or was that something else? I'm not, I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, okay, yeah, well, Brad, well, Brad is probably about eighty-five, ninety thousand. Okay, so so regardless, right? If let's say you are in a market that there is a lot of other barbers there, okay, you're gonna start off with you're gonna have your base clientele, maybe friends, family, and you're gonna have some some walk-ins, right? What you really have to do, especially if you're a new barber, especially if you're a new barber, every customer you get that you do a great job for, and then they usually tell you, "Oh, thanks, man, I appreciate it." You need you need to get them to give you a, a review and a, and a video, a video testimony. I highly recommend this. And, and again, it could be just with the phone, 30 seconds to say, hey, just tell them why you decided to come to me as, as your barber. Why did you come see me, right? Because when they do that, when they say, hey, I went to see Ryan, he's a great barber, you guys should check him out. It's just called third party credibility. Right? It's not you, Ryan, saying, hey, look at me. I know how to cut hair. I'm the best barber. That's not you saying that. That's your customer saying that. Right? People go to Google and they look up Google reviews on, on, on barbershops and businesses because they don't want to hear how great a business is from the business. They want to hear it from other people. So now, if we get a video of your customers, even if you have five or let's say you only have five customers and you got all five of them to give you a video. You post that on Instagram and Facebook, wherever you can, right? Let's say you post it on Monday. Next one, you post another one on two, next week on Monday again. And you post those five, four or five videos over the course of a month. People are going to see that. They're going to assume, hey, this guy must be good. Look how many customers are giving him videos. Look how many customers are saying how, how good he is. Let me check him out. And, and again, that's how you're going to separate yourself. Most barbers, 99% of the barbers in this industry don't do that because they're lazy. Right, they're just they're just lazy, but you guys are professionals, and you guys have to take it and treat your business as such, right? And if you if you don't have a lot to leverage, leverage the customers you have, get them to talk about you, because that's how you position yourself. If you don't know how to differentiate yourself, oh, this barber is different because look how many customers are talking about him. That alone helps separate you and position you in the market. And uh, so to give like to add into what Ryan was saying, so. There's a barber here in, in our city, and he was pretty much the first barber that branched out, went to Barber Colony, came back. He's made a great name for himself. Like he's very popular. Everybody knows who he is. He's on Candace's, you know, Instagram. Um, and so, I like, what I'm hearing, what Ryan's asking, this guy's already got the share of the market. How is he going to get customers into this job? Well, like what I think is, for one, that guy can't cut ninety thousand haircuts, right? He can only cut if he's a fast barber, maybe what three to four hundred haircuts a month. Um, so I hear that, but then the other thing I hear is, well, what kind of haircut is he do versus what kind of haircut is is uh, Ryan going to be doing? Are they the same haircut? If there's a little bit of a difference. It has nothing to do with the other guys. The target audience can be totally different. You know what I mean? And maybe there's customers that can't even get into the guy's shop because he's so busy. And so now they're looking for another avenue. Like, man, I tried to get in there, but it's like a six month wait. Ryan just opened up. He's a cool dude. I saw the customer video. I would love to check the top out. Can you expand on that? How how that could, how that sort of works that way? Yeah, so, so, and, and you broke up at the last part because I heard everything in terms of oh. whether they have different targets. What was the last part you said? Um, I was just saying how uh, so you said about different target audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, can you expand on how he could position himself, even though maybe they're like I said, this guy has to serve the market. How he can position himself sure. and be successful. Because maybe those customers aren't able to get into that guy's shop. And they're like, hey, it's a six-month wait or a three-month wait. 
now here's Ryan that pops up and he's taking advantage of that. Yeah, so I, I think if, if, again, if you're in a saturated market, if, if a, one barber has a huge, or what we think is a huge um, part of the market here, like Donnie said, most barbers on average to book back to back is going to be three to four hundred customers a month. So that means there's still a lot more people that can't be serviced. So it, it, it goes into are you again? Are you guys cutting the same kind of people? Right. If you if you want to go after a certain demographic of people, like let's say he's cutting straight hair, but you'd rather cut, you'd rather do fades, hit tops, things like that. It's how you brand yourself. Right. If you want to bring those kind of customers, then you got to showcase those are the kind of customers you're cutting. Right. If you if you wanted to get, if, if for example, if you're if you're offering that as a service, you want to share that on your social media, so when people come to check you out, they can see that and they say, oh, okay, this guy must be great at fades because these are the type of customers he's doing or another way that you can separate yourself is um when it when it just comes to marketing and advertising in terms of running social media ads a bar most barbers who are booked out they they get lazy you you just have you just have to out compete them and and just put your content in front of people because there's enough people who need haircuts he can't cut every but every male between the ages of, of 13 and even if he's doing kids from the ages of 7 to, to 55 he can't do all those people he, he just can't physically he can't so it, it, i think at first it starts with your mindset you can't go in thinking oh man this guy must be the best i can't i can't cut anybody it's definitely a mindset thing because the opportunity is there the opportunity is there. We, we're working with a shop who's in, who has a population of thir uh, was it like 13,000 people, and there's more than 15 shops in that location alone. He opened up a location there, and 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 again, like it's not like he's he's better at cutting than these other people. He's just a, he, he's just been able to to again leverage his current client base that he has by sharing content. And he's been able to showcase an experience because I, I, I really highlight showcasing experience because a lot of barbers don't. So if you're somebody who gives like a hot towel shave, which is not new, but still trendy, still new in the market, you need to showcase that because most barbers don't do it. And again, if you're, if you're a, a, a new barber, you can also do to help separate yourself from everyone else is you got to create a relationship with your audience online. Right. So right now, all you guys, what you are doing is you're going to school, learning how to be a barber. If, if you aren't sharing that, if you aren't sharing that kind of content on your social media, I, I want to say shame on you. You got to share it now. Right. Now that you know, share it, because what you're doing is you're documenting the journey. People love to see growth. So if they see how you were when you were when you just filled out the app or when you, when you just said, hey, guys, I'm starting to I'm starting to go to barber school. They see you guys practicing on mannequins and they see how great your work is on actual people. They're going to connect with that, right? Because people, people <laughs> buy from people. And, and, I, and I guess it's like maybe some of you guys might not be extroverts. Listen, I'm, I'm an introvert. But when it comes to talking about what I like talking about, which is marketing, advertising, I can talk about it all day. So same thing when it comes to you guys. I'm sure when you talk about when it's about haircut, I mean, you guys are going to school for this. So you guys have to have some passion about just sharing what, you, what you're learning. So if I were you guys, you definitely want to get a piece of the market. You got, you got to sh first showcase your growth, document your journey, but also give value. Because another thing that barbers don't do is don't see any barbers that are saying, hey, you know, if you want to prevent balding, here are, he, 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 here are a few tips. Or you have dandruff, this is how you treat dandruff. These are the kind of foods that hair growth. No barber's talking about that. But when you start talking about it, when Ryan starts talking about, hey, did you know that when you shower, with, when, you take, when, you, when you wash your hair with cold water, it actually does a lot better for your scalp? And he shares that kind of information. People are going to say, holy shit, Ryan knows what he's talking about. Ryan is an expert in the hair industry. I'm going to get my hair cut from him. Because when you're in the market and people see that you're the educator in your market people pe on, people are going to want to learn from the te i mean people are going to want to get their service from the teacher versus the student right you guys can all position yourselves in your individual these towns and communities as the expert as the teacher by just giving value and if you guys don't know um what to what kind of value to share
Just look up frequently asked questions in the barbershop. Like you can Google this. You can go to you can Google different blogs by GQ magazine and just look at the blogs that they're sharing. You can talk about, hey guys, these are the top five hairstyles you get, right? Give value, especially in a time like now where people are consuming social media content more than ever because they're at home. This is where you guys start to grow your audience. And when the shops are reopen and when it's time for you to actually get on the field and start cutting hair and servicing customers, people are going to remember who you are because during this time when everybody was doing nothing, you were giving value to the marketplace. Does that, does that right on. help answer Yeah, especially. <clears throat> yeah, definitely, definitely helps. What were you going to say, Mike, can I chime in real quick? Yeah, yeah, man. So... So um, I didn't hear the question, but I just kind of caught the tail of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but especially right now, the where they could deliver value super easy is with safety and sanitation. Yeah. Talking about how easy viruses spread, actually becoming experts on how viruses um, go into a host body. And that stuff, because people don't know, they're only seeing COVID-19. be like, hey, you know, hey, this is Ryan. I'm student at South Dakota Barber College. I know right now, you know, times are kind of crazy with coronavirus. Just wanted to share a few quick tips on, um, you know, safety and sanitation, you know, and then maybe use even like the barbicide product and how it kills certain bacteria and viruses. And that's going to start distancing itself. Um, one is providing value for free. Now they're looking at him as an industry expert. And now they're going to want to go to his shop because they know that he's actually practicing safe uh, methods in terms of disinfection and you know what he's talking about. I think you were right. It's going to be very big when this dust settles. Right now, guys are thinking like, man, I was going to that shop. That guy was using the same this on every single customer. Well, yeah. I've never seen him affecting his tools. And then vice versa, they're also going to say, hey, I know at Donnie's shop, they disinfect in between every client. I'm feeling a little bit better about going into that shop now, right? It starts that value and why you're charging those prices start to make sense because <clears throat> you're spending your time disinfecting all your tools, cleaning your linens and all that stuff. That, that starts adding that value. Exactly. Uh, any, any other questions? Got that photo of Jonathan popping up. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You Slow go. down, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I guess I guess one 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 more one more thing to add was like I heard one time when you're like marketing your uh, you know your haircuts and all this stuff, advertising your haircuts. Um, that you should include like your bad haircuts, like when you started or something. Yeah, because it'll, 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 yeah, it'll show growth. So I mean, I guess you'd probably say that's true then, right? Hundred percent. Like, like right now, a lot of people, or this, and again, I'm just gonna talk very relevant to you guys, right? A lot of barbers, they, they, they kind of aren't sure what kind of social media content to be sharing, and it's just like share some of your older haircuts and do a transformation Tuesday. Oh, wow. LOL. Look, or you can just say, hey, look how, like, talk about how far you've come. Or even if you don't want to get too personal, you can just share an uh, information report about transformation and just talk about, again, show how far you came. Like your haircuts look, used to look choppy or used to look okay. You used to look like great clips haircuts. Now you guys are looking like five-star barbers. Right, and showcase that because when people see that, they say, "Wow, that person's grown." And it also shows the time that you put in. It shows the the, the journey. So I think 100%. If you if you um have any pictures of your old old cuts, and then you want to show them how far you've learned, 100% use that. 100% use that. Right on. What about um like you know how we were talking about on Instagram? Most of these guys, and again, they're really great haircuts. But you look at their Instagram feed, and all it is is a bunch of great haircuts. Yeah. But you don't really know much about the person that's posting them. Yeah. Exactly. Where maybe just because that's what barbering really is, and I think it's being missed right now in the traditional shops versus like the online appointment. I mean, guys are so caught up in the appointment, or I'm starting the haircut, 
and they're in there with headphones cutting dudes hair, not even taking that opportunity to engage and just being real with the person mm-hmm. and putting that out there on social media with just being a genuine person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like where they get to know Ryan the Barber as a, as a guy, where he's sharing like, hey man, I'm actually Native American from these this area. Um, first Native American to go to Barber College in South Dakota in over 30 years. That's going to open him up to a full target audience. Yeah. Like, man, I'm that guy. yeah. Like, you, you guys all have unique stories. All of them are unique, right? And you can all leverage that because in a world where, like, again, like, we just have to figure out what makes us different. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, I, I do this or that. Like, I'm, I'm Native American. I, like, what you're going to say, I, I'm Native American, when I'm supposed to go to school. Or you can talk about, like, or you can leverage your own interest, right? I know there's some barbers who, um, they, 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 they have such a passion for sports, right? Like, one of the barbers out here, he, he's very, really into sports. And then what ended up happening is he started to attract, like, professional athletes. So you go to his Instagram, feed, you see him talking about sports or him cutting up people, uh, professional athletes that, like, that, that are in the NFL or in the NBA or in the soccer league. So it, it's like, when it comes to, like, I, I wouldn't, you don't need to think too much into it. It's just be yourself showcase your personality if you if you don't want to just show just haircuts on your feed because again people are just going to compare you on price so if, if you want like if you can get the picture with you and the client or just a client smiling in their chair or even if you took a selfie with your client what you're doing is building a relationship like donnie mentioned earlier if you're a barber and you have your headphones in and you pay no attention to the person you're cutting and you just cut them up they pay you when they leave What's, why is this guy really going to come back to you? Like, you didn't really give him, like, a, you didn't build that more relationship. So if another barber opens up, if another barber opens up, and they opens up a, a shop or another barber, yeah, they're going to go to the other barber, too, because they don't, it, it, you're, you're a commodity, right? Oh, what, whatever, I'm just going to go to cheaper cut somewhere else. But if you want to build your business and have returning customers, because what's really going to, like, anyone could get 20 new customers, 50 new customers, 100 new customers, but it's the ones that are coming back that is going to help you feel that your, your business and your personal books, your personal uh, books of clientele. So it's really important that you do take time with your, with your clients because that alone is going to separate you. Like that alone is going to position you as as a much uh, as a, as a professional and uh, build that relationship with your, with your clientele, so they wouldn't leave you for someone else or uh, you know Pete, like this guy who has four hundred customers. If he sees a new shop and he's like, oh well, hey, they make the let me just try something new. They're more likely to do it because they have no rapport, no relationship with that barber. They've only been cutting with him because he's just there, right? Yeah. Some people some people are really good, but they're only good because. People don't know about that you, you, Ryan, are cutting hair. They just don't know. People don't know what they don't know. So we can't, we can't, we can't feed into the fact that, oh, you know, Nick's not going to try because he, has a, he already has a big clientele. It's, no, I got to put my face out there because they, people are probably going to him because they don't know anyone else to go to. Yeah, and, they see, and they've been seeing him over and over and over, so they just think, hey, this is where you go. Yeah, cause, and, and think about it like this. A lot of if, if South Dakota Barber College was not here, right? If, if they did not market themselves, or if they were not even here, right? You guys, would, most of you guys wouldn't have gone to Barber College. It, it would have probably just been another thing, just uh, whatever. I'll just do it another time and blow it off. But what happened? Right? There's other colleges like pretty far that if you guys really wanted to, you could have took that trip. But then South Dakota Barber College came out and said, "Hey, we're here. Now you know that we're here. Check us out." But if you don't give people the opportunity to know that you're here, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're throwing yourself short. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Anybody <clears throat> else got anything that they want to? Um, any questions anyone else has? Or? Well, I was going to mention, you know, a little more about my situation and uh, kind of the demographic of Pisto. You know, we see in the course of a summer, we, we generally see about 2 million people pass through Keystone. Mm-hmm. Um, this time of the year, there might be 300 residents. That's it. Um, and everything else kind of shuts down. But my, my father-in-law, who is almost 80, 
he's established this old store down there to, I guess, be somewhat of a gathering place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of a place locals have always come to. Um, it's never been, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but it's never been really managed well. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just been a place. And I mean, they joked around, there's a bar in there and, you know, we have bands once in a while, but they've always joked around calling it a break even bar. It's never really, you know, been a successful um, money making place. And I guess it's up, it's up to me to make it that. Um, so as far as the marketing goes, like in my construction business, we relied solely on word of mouth. Yeah. And yeah, we'd pass out business cards. We saw a little more effectiveness in like um, flyers that we would put up or we would notify our, you know, our, our uh, like our commercial sales rep at a, at a lumber yard. You know, and they put our name out there. But as far as being having an online presence, I have totally failed. And I'm just not I'm I've never been savvy in that in that area. I'm hoping my ten year old daughter will teach me a few tricks. <laughs> um but I have a lot of learning to do there. And I guess I don't really have a question, but I'm looking forward to growing in that, mm -hmm. in that area. And, um, you know, I've been kind of hoping to meet someone that could facilitate that for me. Yeah, no, no, no doubt, man. Um, yeah, we can, so yeah, we can definitely, you can definitely talk. I, I, and again, we have, uh, we have a Facebook group that's just dedicated to sharing marketing, like similar to what this style where we're like, I'm giving you guys some marketing strategies or just ideas and just answering marketing questions. So definitely you'll find value in that group, even if it's about, you know, the construction side of things. But yeah. Strategies is definitely you got, you got to stay relevant by, by sharing content on social media. Um, and, and a lot of barbers, a lot of the barbers, they, like now, like, or before everything that's going on, they built their businesses all on word of mouth. Social media is just word about that scale, right? If I got a good haircut, I might call a second I got a good haircut, but now social media, if I go out, well, I can take a picture and tag my barber. My barber's going to get a lot more views to the site, a lot more business. So word of mouth, like, uh, like word of mouth is just social media at scale, right? Yeah. Word of mouth is the best type of business because it's people are coming to you with, with the expectation that you're going to give them a good service because of what you did with their friend. It's not like you have to resell them or re try to reposition yourself and say, you already have a, a relationship or a foundation built on, on that as a referral. So, Mike, can I jump in? Yeah. So, um, I think like what I'm hearing with Jake, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you know where Keystone is, but it's right near uh, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, okay, yep. So, again, like you said, tourist area but when it's tourism isn't there it's a small town mm -hmm. what i see with jake is he's going to open up a shop mm -hmm. he's going to build it out it's going to be very nice he's going to be oh, high okay. yeah. what's that no no i, I understand the question now I understand the oh, question. He's gonna, I, to be honest i thought he was asking about marketing for the construction company but you're talking about if you open up a shop there but let me uh, let me uh, marketing for that okay and let me add another layer in there yep so He's going to open up a shop that's going to be smart, right? He's going to build it out, put the money into it. Mm -hmm. His skill set is going to be up here. Mm -hmm. Guys that are potentially going to be his customers mm -hmm. aren't going to be, they're going to be wanting to pay 15 bucks a haircut. Mm -hmm. But I think Jake is wanting to come out and position himself maybe a little bit more reasonable because he's delivering a little bit more value. Yep. How does he position himself if he, let's say he opens up at 19 bucks, mm -hmm. where these guys are going to be like, I'm not paying 19 bucks for a haircut, right? Because maybe it's not the right for that demographic. It's not mm -hmm. a, a good fit there. Um, how, does he, how does he go about this the right way so that he doesn't um, shoot himself in the foot, open up, nobody wants to go to a shop, but he's charging 
Okay, so so for starters, for starters, especially with for starters, what you want to do is you want you you got to get yourself involved in the community. Like shops that just open up and pray to God that people will come, it, it, you're not you're not destined to last very long. And especially if you want to come in at a higher price point compared to these other shops. Again, it's like what makes you different? Why am I going to pay you nineteen, twenty five, thirty bucks when I can pay ten or five for it? Right. What you got to do is, if I were you, is look at the schools in that community. Right. It, I'm sure that you can sponsor some school teams. And one of like, sponsorship is really just it's it's not expensive. Like a hundred bucks maybe for some teams for some of these sports teams you, you can just if they're having a soccer game say hey i'm going to sponsor this team i'm going to buy gatorade for the team right for like 14 kids i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy a couple packs of gatorade for 20 bucks what happens now is you're going to get their parents to notice who you are right and the thing is is parents they tend to spend a little bit more for their kids right there's the, the, they tend to spend a little bit more and the kids come and then I'll, and some of them got you know, obviously fathers and you're able to bring in that network of people. So that's that way of being able to bring, of bring, bringing in the kids to your shop and parents that'll pay for that, pay that premium price for their kids. Another way that you can do, especially for some of you guys starting out, I'm sure that you have, um, look at the businesses in that area, right? One business I would look at is I'll look at car dealerships, maybe, right? Some car dealerships, because the reason why I would look at them is I'll go over and say, hey, guys, I want to offer you guys a first time discount to come out just to try out my shop. Uh, and, and I want this to only be for employees, right? Or you can offer them some exclusive discount or whatever to get them to come see you guys. Because the reason for that is in the car business, the turnaround for employees, they usually last around three to six, three, three months, five months at a time before they bounce off to another deal. So what happens is you're going to get a consistent flow from that shop. And another thing is, is that these guys, they need to always look good because they're always in front of people to talk to the people. So these are people who are going to be coming once, twice a month. Some of them are, I, I know guys that, because I used to work at a dealership, and there will be guys getting cuts every week. So that's another, and, and then they'll, they'll have the money to afford your premium price or just to come see you guys. And the thing is, is, our salespeople or anyone who's making a certain amount of income that's part of networks that are making around the same money, right? And if and, and what you want to do is you want to start plugging them for referrals. So, and, and, and another thing to add is these are people who people who um, like I mentioned, they, they have they're, they're, in, they're in groups of people who make that kind of money. Another thing is that I would go after like maybe going to a local police station or fire station, getting involved that way with the community, right? Offering them some type of relationship or discount to bring them in. Because again, if you're new to the market, you got to give some type of value. It, it, whether it be a five dollar off a first cut, something just to bring them through the door. Because you're you, even if you're breaking even on the first visit. You're banking on them coming back, right? That's why if you can give a great quality haircut, a great service, and build rapport and a relationship with the customer, they're going to come back and they're going to pay you at full. They just will. And the only reason I can say this with confidence is because we've tested it with other shops. And, and people are, are, are going to start to learn that, okay, here's a new shop that came to town. This is the price. Other shops will imitate you. You can ask Donnie. The people will try to copy you. And they will copy you. The, the bare downfall is, is you're always going to be a step ahead of them. You're going to be known as a shop that set the standard in that community because other people are going to start to reevaluate themselves and wait a minute. They're able to get customers in and they're paying them at this price. Other people are going to start to try to change and adapt to you, but they're not going to be able to catch up to how far you're going. You're always going to be one or two steps ahead, regardless. But I would say, like I said, I would be a community-driven shop, especially if you're going to start in at, at a higher cost than what people are normal to. Because when you get back to the community, the community is going to get back to you too, and they're going to be like, you know what, nineteen, twenty bucks, forty bucks for a haircut. You know, I, I'll give him that. I see what he does for the kids. I yeah. see what he does for the food drive. And it's not like these are crazy expenses. You, like one thing too that we did for a shop that really helped separate them was reach out to a local food driver or, or some of these um, nonprofits in your area and just say, "Hey, I'm gonna create a bin inside my barber shop, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna handle uh, a donation. Um, I'm gonna handle donations. All the donations are gonna go straight to you. I'm just gonna ask all my clients when they come in to bring like hand gloves or maybe a canned food." As they, a food drive, you can host it at the barbershop. That's just another way that you're giving back to the community and, and creating relationships with the community.
because once people really start to see that, like, yeah, they they charge twenty bucks, they charge forty bucks for a haircut, or fifty bucks, but look how much they're doing for us. And the thing is, it doesn't cost so much on our end as, as a barber shop owner, or as a barber. It doesn't cost that much to put the food driver. Maybe it takes some some of your time, like twenty minutes to set up a bin, to then drive it to the nonprofit at the end of the day or end of the week. It doesn't take a lot of time, but this much time is going to be this much value you're giving to the community. And again, it's just another way to separate yourself. And then when people see that, they say, you know what? These guys are legit. You know, I'm, I'm going to go see them. And I don't care how much I pay because I see what, they, what they're doing for me or what they're doing for my kids or what they're doing for the community. Uh, thanks. No problem, man. I just, I just want to say that all this info is like pure gold. <laughs> It really is. Yeah, yeah. I'd be happy you see the value of it, man. Like again, I, I, like when when Donnie talked to me about this, and I'm like, hey, I, like it's it's our way of giving it back to you guys because uh, what, the information we're sharing with you, a lot of people aren't doing. It. Meaning, you guys are coming out of the school with a huge advantage over all of your competition, over all of them. And, and and the truth is, is that there's enough opportunity to go around. You should never think, oh, I have not enough customers for me. There is. There is. It's just, it's just again, putting yourself out there and, and, and just offering a great service. You know, you guys, you guys are learning from the best. So, you know, there's, a, there's plenty of groups and organizations to be yeah. involved in. And for me, it, it's, I have to, re, you know, everybody knows me as the eyeglass guy. I need to be known as the barber. Yep. So or, or or you can just leverage that you were, were the, the eyeglass guy. Or later down the road, I'm still the eyeglass guy when I have my brand of who I am. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Anything else? Any other questions you guys might have? Or... Oh. oh, hold on. Me... I think um, Billy is uh, muted. It's getting hot in our cars. I think he passed out. Oh, man. I hope he's okay, man. Wait, I think he, just, he muted himself. He probably muted himself. All right. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any, uh, any other questions? Anything you want me to cover? I think the right questions were were uh, were asked already, yeah. and uh, yeah, everything was just pure gold. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank thank you for your time. Oh, no thank problem. You. Thank you, guys. Hey, uh, Mike. Yep. So, I'll I'll kind of walk them through the the video that we're gonna do. Yep. Um, are they submitting that to a Google Drive or where where are we having that? We can have it set up in a in a Google Drive, or if that's easier for everyone. Yeah, we can set up a Google Drive, and then um, everyone could just upload the video there. Okay, I'll send you. I'll, I can create one, or you, I know you probably have one for the school. It just I think it'll be easier for everyone to put it on Google. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I mean, I could all. I could probably have them if they wanted to post it to their story or something, and then I can save it from there. Or yeah, yeah, because this is a thing. It, it, like you guys have to all remember, you guys all like it's your brand. So almost consider yourself a business, right? You guys are all in in a sense working for yourself. So again, yeah, share it on your social media too because what's happening is you're documenting your journey and then people are gonna connect with you. If they didn't, they're gonna connect with you now because you're sharing your story. And what what it's just again the community loves to watch the world. They love to see pictures of when kids were this old and now they're this older. This is what they were doing before and now they're doing this. So hundred percent share it on the story, man. Oh, and then you, are you going to send the link for the Facebook group? Yeah, I can probably send it. I'll send, I'll send you the link, Donnie, if you want to send it out. I can send it to you right now. It's called Barber's Hangout. Right? Barber's Hangout? Yeah, it's called Barber's Hangout. All right, man. Well, hey, I don't have anything else. Um, thank you so much for your time.
Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody got a lot of value out of today. And, uh, obviously, we'll see this again um, when we get more into the marketing aspect. Yep. Um, and and are these guys able to reach out to you? Like, if they if they all join the group in that group, if any marketing questions you guys have, ask in the group. And then myself and one of my colleagues, like that's how you get access to me. Like I, we, like, especially with what's going on now, um, a lot of barbers are looking for marketing help because they're like, "What do I do?" Or like some of the shops, at least in Massachusetts, like, "What do I do?" So, created this group um, not too long ago, and we said, "Hey, come in here. Just if we're giving away free value, we share advice, marketing, our experience. So that way, we can position you guys um, much better for when you guys are open and when you're all out to try." So um, there you'll be able to access me. You just post in the group, ask any questions. Usually get a see right here. You guys can see my screen. So this is it. This is Barbara's Hangout. And then like we have members who might ask questions like about pricing. We we have videos that, that go over um, differences in business models, whether it be booth rent or commission. Um, we have like memes and stuff because we joke too. Uh, and, and yeah, like, there's a lot of support in this group, guys. It's called Barber's Hangout. It's a free group, no fee or anything that, that comes in, but it's, it's just a, a lot of value when you're giving away, you know? Like a guy asked right here, what are the correct ways of branding yourself? And I was able to, to respond with a with video, right? So like, that's the kind of access you'll get as being a part of the group. And just, we're just sharing information because again, especially with you guys, we want to be able to put you guys in a position of success, especially when you got Batman shirt again. Yeah, man. Yo, I'm, I'm Batman. a big Batman fan, man. I'm a big Batman fan. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So um, definitely join the group. It, it, you know, definitely join the group. Barbara's hanging out. Yeah, you got to you gotta give us a shout out on there, man. Yeah, man. 100%. Oh, yeah. That's plenty of shout outs for real. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. No problem, guys. Hey, uh, uh, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe. Again, thank you for having me, Donnie. Um, and it was great to be able to, to, to hear everyone's stories um, going into this. So this, this was really insightful. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Uh, thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. See you, Mike. See you, Donnie.